Los Angeles uh, has a preschool program which we run, a K through 12 program which we run, a young adult ed program which we run. That's 909,000 students who come every day. About 88% live in circumstances of poverty, most unimaginable poverty. 16, 17,000 youth are homeless, are roofless. They don't actually have a shelter. Um, uh, no one looks like me in LA. 77% um, of the students speak another language other than English as their first language. We translate everything into eight languages every single day for LA USD, and every single solitary one of those students uh, wants to be you and us. And they want to graduate, um, they want meaningful employment. Uh, they want to enter post-secondary without remediation. Uh, they want health care, a roof over their head. Currently, a third is our best estimate. We think it's low. Our undocumented live in entire shadow society. And every conceivable thing we would imagine you could do uh, with a social security number is not available to those folks. Um, so what I say with all sincerity is LA is America only sooner. And we are coming to a hometown near you. And we had better figure this out. Um, how well we did this, how, so, so how well we do this and how um, well we stumble and figure that out and move quicker um, is going to matter uh, enormously around this. Um, I'm going to take my cue from our Aspen sister Dima who's like, guts, like really? Just push as hard as you can, as quickly as you can for youth rights. The system is fundamentally designed, and appropriately so in part, for the adults to be able to do their job and lift youth out of poverty. But the system itself is mostly, if not completely, silent on the rights of students. So if we're thinking about the transformations, they are not just and necessary, how we do about early literacy, how we do about youth off track, how are we going to deal with the academy, which is producing teachers in methodologies for which the students have already exceeded the technology ability for how we're training our first new teachers around this, in content that is already stale by the time they walk into the school. We are talking about the ability and the necessity to transform a system pre-K through 14, 16, if we are going to maintain anything of the American dream for the totality of the other and remain competitive and uh, cooperatively competitive um, on a national stage. So we've thought about the transformations um, in the way that one would think about students' rights being in a box, and you need four sides to those boxes so that those rights leak away. Um, so it's been about negotiations. So like all of us, we live in a union town, Cod Karen Union men my whole life. I have 11 unions I get the opportunity to negotiate with every day um, in LA. Um, and you think about how do you secure the opportunity to transform the system uh, through negotiations. The second is regulation. How do our governing bodies work with elected school board? How do you pass those policies so that when students who have bonded with, quote, our best and brightest teachers are not ripped away from them in schools uh, it disproportionate. So schools that serve our most neediest and most impacted youth tend to have our youngest staff. So when you do a layoff, 70% of that whole faculty has to disappear overnight. It is a fundamental um, violation of youth's right to stability uh, around that. So policies in terms of regulation. Legislation, actively involved at the state level and at the federal level for laws that honor, support, protect adults' rights, and do exactly the same for youth rights around that. And lastly, litigation. Now, in this country, when all else fails for the other, you go to the court and you pray for redress. And we have used it sparingly and profoundly effectively. Um, and the thought of making sure that there are cases for those who are not able to vote, can't lobby, can't actually put money into large packs, but are fundamentally hoping that this works for them so that one day they could do that, their voice actually needs to be protected around that. So that's how we've been thinking about this. Um, I would say that I am exceedingly worried about the cautiousness of this and this pace issue. And I actually think um, you were spot on in terms of the notion that it is about courage. And it's why you get the privilege of receiving an unbelievable gift of your fellow brothers and sisters at an institute like this. And you have to go home and, and actually be out there in high risk for those who have everything um, to lose for that risk.